So in the previous video, Delta Hedging 2, uh, we had got as far as here where we had worked out for a given uh, stock price with a particular exercise, risk free rate, dividend yield, maturity 52 weeks, and volatility of 20%, that the delta of the call option was equal to 0 0.63683, and that would imply buying 100,000, just the number of short calls uh, we had initially was 100,000. If we scale that delta by 100,000, that would have implied we should be, at, at least our initial position should be, we should buy 63,000. 683 stock and the logic here is just this it's that we're dynamically replicating the short position on the option we sold 100,000 call options delta is 0 0.63 and we must buy that number of stocks so if we sold 100,000 call options we should buy 0 0.63 times 100,000 to set off the strategy Okay, so we buy 63,683, and the cost of that first period is the cost of the stock in week zero by the number of stock we're purchasing. And the overall cost, the cumulative cost, is just the same. And the interest cost is the cash amount times E R by T negative the principal. So we take this cumulative cost E R by T negative whatever the principal is, the cumulative cost. So that gives us just the interest cost for one week. And then we can say, okay, let's take this down uh, this uh, share number of shares purchased is being dictated each period by the delta okay and what we omitted here is that the delta should be f4 so we pull this down again and you can see 66 also what we so we should have a, a shares purchase should be up to 66,000 but over in that week what we should have is the old delta or the new delta minus the old times 100,000 and F4 and so because in this case the stock price went down and T is also less Delta is less and so we can pull that down so we should sell out 8,952 and that would bring down the cost of the purchase we could would be okay the stock price has gone up so this kind of dynamic environment uh, so we acquire an additional 444 4, stock and the additional cost is 455,000 um, we need to get the cumulative costs so that's what that's equal to okay we can write it this way sum open brackets and we can say take these two values and f4 and plus also the lagged value for the interest so I'm going to start at a sum and just itself so colon and itself again so let's take this colon and itself and what I need to do also is to make sure I have F4 F4 that's so that the the first value is dollarized okay and so we pull this down one further value and then we can take the four and pull all down together And this last value we don't 
doesn't get incorporated in. So this figure here, uh, L58. Okay, so that's L58. This cell here, so this cell can go out, delete. And okay, so the if you like the overall cost of the strategy for the period is the sum of all the decisions in terms of the actual cost of purchase. And in addition, we have the sum of all the weekly interest rate costs. And they get incorporated in each week. So if we go back to, let's say here, when we're in week four, or when four weeks has elapsed, the cost of the strategy, the total or cumulative cost, is the sum of the purchasing decisions, purchasing or selling decisions in terms of whether we buy or sell out the stock, and also the interest costs associated in each given week. We have to take into account the interest costs because if we hadn't money tied up in stock, this could be interest earning 5% for the interval of one week, and one week here is the one over 52. So that's why that's incorporated in. Now, if we had bought 100,000, the cost of 100,000 call options is equal to the product of these two. So 100,000 times the initial interest, the initial uh, Black Scholes time value of the call would be in cash amount. So we could do, let's just put any dollar sign in here, uh, currency, and find a symbol. Let's go with a dollar sign of any kind at all. So if we can find... And no dollar sign there. Okay, Latin. Okay, so one million and... 45,000. Okay, it's the interest rate. It's the cost of holding um, uh, 100,000 call options. So if you sold 100,000 call options, that's how much you should have expected to receive. But this delta hedging strategy is saying the following, that you have a dynamically replicated portfolio where the 100,000 calls are being offset by a delta position in the stock. So the delta e negative q t n d one. Okay, so this the delta here each week is being recalculated, and that then dictates: Do we buy stock? How much stock do we initially buy to cover that position? So we could, if you like, take this edit copy. Okay, go back into the spreadsheet. We could take this strategy here. Okay, so think of what we're trying to do. We're trying to, we're, we've sold 100,000 call options and we should buy ND1, E negative QT, ND1 times the stock. So in this case, we bought ND1 times 100,000. So we buy 63,000 stock and the cost the price of the stock on that time period multiplied by ND1 multiplied by the number of stock that we buy purchase so it's six million three hundred sixty eight the following week the stock price goes down ND1 goes down we sell out some of our position and we mitigate or reduce the cost of purchasing the stock the week after the stock price goes again and the number of shares now drops to buy another additional almost 8,000. But then the following week the stock price goes up and ND1 rises. So for all the world this is, is like the stop loss strategy that we proposed. Except in this with the stop loss strategy what we had intimated was that when the stock price went above 100 we bought up fully 100,000 and as the stock price goes below 
100 the exercise is allowed fully 100,000 stock. This strategy of delta hedging is much more dynamic uh, and much more incremental. We've, we're not buying 100,000 uh, at a pop. We're slowly adjusting our position, e position either building up or selling out reflecting what's happening to the stock price. So if the stock price goes down, we sell out a little bit. If the stock price goes back up, we sell out a little bit. Um, if we then uh, freeze the panes here, which might be of some help, so let's just make that a little bit bigger, just to help us with viewing. I'll go again. Okay. Um, we'll sell out a little bit. If we freeze the panes here, we can have a look at what's going on with the strategy. So let's just go to freeze panes. And we've frozen. Okay, so we can come down and you can see as the weeks pass by. And look at what's happening. As the stock price, in this case the stock price went up and up. But then it went, uh, if we go back, it's actually never goes above 100 and so as the weeks pass slowly ND1 is declining if we look at ND1 it's going down and that's triggering additional selling out of the stock so as the stock price in this case it went up we buy more but it's actually most of the time it's getting less and also if we look at this we're selling out the stock so as we go down through, you can see ND1 by week 40 is virtually zero, um, completely zero by the fourth, fifth last week, and we're completely sold out of stock. And the cost of this strategy is very close to the option value. Uh, typically, it should be this value, and then we discount by E negative RT to get back the value of the call. In other words, the value of the call is equivalent to this. The economic value of the call is equivalent to this. Now if the stock price goes up, let's F9 and see what happens. Now in this case the stock price goes up quite dramatically and you can see already by week 28 we're well in excess of 100 and ND1 is very very high, we're at 0 0.94 We've almost fully bought up 100,000 stock. There's a little bit of a fall here. We sell out minimally just 500 stock, but actually we we are relatively built up, fully built up. And by week 44, week 45, week 46, we have completely sold out our stock position. Now the cost of this strategy is what it is made up of two things. First of all, it's made up of uh, 10, 100,000 by the exercise, which is 10 million, because we're saying we, we have the right to buy the stock at 100. That's what a, a call option would give us. So 100,000 by 100 is 10 million. If we subtract away 10 million, so take the product of those two, multiply by 100,000 is 10 million. If we take the difference between the two, so this minus this is 1,118,000. It's not that very different from this figure here. If we discount by E negative RT, you can see we would, the values, while not the same, not that far off. And to improve the strategy, uh, we here we're just rebalancing once a week. But in theory, Black Scholes assumes continuous trading, so trading in the nanoseconds. Okay, let's hit F9 again to see the effect. Okay, 108. The cost here taking 10 million away from the cumulative costs here. We go okay again. This time it's lower, substantially lower. But what we have here is no longer the cost of the purchase of the stock, what the cumulative cost here just reflects the cost of the option. And the value here now 
is now close to this value here. That's because 